Hey everyone, I'm back again to talk about building my camera. This time I want to talk about actually taking control of the device camera and taking pictures with it. I already talked about how you get hold of an image when you don't have access to the camera, so here we don't have to worry quite so much about compatibility, except to make sure that we use feature detection to disable this feature where it isn't available. As it happens, though, with the release of Safari 11, the latest stable version of all the major browsers now actually supports the Get User Media API, which is the core feature that we need. So let's have a look at how we handle all of this. As I said, one of the first things we need to do is feature detection. So uh, I have a constants file here, which just has um, a couple of things. So I'm checking for the image capture uh, object in the window. I'm checking for the media devices object in Navigator. We'll use those to determine that these two APIs actually exist. So I've extracted all of the uh, camera-related code for my app into this helper class that I've just called camera helper. This is going to handle all of the interaction with the device so that the UI layer can just concentrate on how to uh, present this information to the user. So one of the first things we need to do is if the feature is available in the browser, it doesn't actually mean we've got a camera. So uh, we need a way to let the UI layer determine what cameras are available. So that's what this method is for, the get cameras uh, method. If the media devices API is available, then uh, we'll use that, the navigator media devices enumerate de devices method to get hold of all of the media devices that are attached to our phone or laptop or whatever. But this will include uh, video cameras as well as microphones. So we then filter this to get only uh, devices that are video input devices. And then we return that. And if the if this API isn't available, then get cameras will just return an empty array. Once the UI knows that there is a camera available, it can call us to say that it wants to start a stream, and it can pass in a device ID. Now, this device ID comes from the objects that were returned from get cameras. And this allows the UI to say that it specifically wants uh, one of those cameras. So this allows for UI features like uh, switching between the front-facing and rear-facing cameras, or just to pick a known camera from a drop-down, for example. Then when we actually want to get the data uh, from the camera, we need to uh, use the navigator.mediadevices.getUserMedia call to get a stream. Now, there's a bit of uh, terminology here which is a little bit confusing. Uh, there's a few overloaded words. Uh, so start off with a stream is just a bunch of media information. And it will consist of tracks, uh, one or more tracks. And those tracks could be video or audio. Uh, so in theory, a stream can have multiple video feed, uh, multiple video tracks and multiple audio tracks. Uh, in this case, we're expecting to get uh, just video. Um, and I'll say why in a moment. Um, and we should just have one. So we have a stream, and we have a track. And the track is the first video track. Now, for each of these streams and tracks, there are um, things called constraints, settings, and capabilities. A stream has uh, both constraints and capabilities. The browser has capabilities. And a track has capabilities, constraints, and settings. And then when we want to actually take a photo, if we're using the image capture API, that again takes another settings object. So I apologize if you get confused with constraints and capabilities and settings. There are, there are several things called that. Uh, that's just the way the API is. So the first place that we're going to use this is in our, in our actual get user media call, we pass in the constraints for the stream. This, um, this is our way of telling the browser what kind of camera we want. So most of our constraints are defined as a constant here at the top of the file. You can see that the, uh, we say that we want video. This is why we're not going to get any audio, because the audio property is by default false. So we're only saying we want video. We're not setting the device ID here, but we set it in the function. I'll show you that in a sec. We say that we want the facing mode to be either user, that is, the camera is facing the user, it's a selfie camera, or environment, it's facing away from the user into whatever you're looking at. And we say that the width and height should ideally be, this is 1080p HD resolution. Now, with these constraints, I could have said that the facing mode uh, was just user. I could have said, I only want selfie mode. Or I could have said that I want the height, the width and height to be exactly 1080p resolution. 
But if these constraints can't be um, satisfied, um, then you won't get any uh, you won't get any stream at all. So if I ran this with exact here or um, having the just user on my laptop here, this would actually fail because uh, my laptop um, will only give me 720p uh, resolution out of the camera. And uh, it only supports an environment camera. I mean, technically, it's facing the user, but it describes it as an environment camera. So we're using whatever device ID was passed in uh, from the UI layer to change the constraints for the video uh, so that when we call get user media, we're getting a particular camera. So that's the initial constraints for get user media. We also have um, various settings we can put on the stream um, once it's going. So once our stream is going, we pull out the first video track of that stream, and we store it away. We can now set options, set constraints on the track. When we want to set an option on a track, we need to make sure that it's actually supported. So there are two things that we need to look at. One is, at the top of the file here, um, we have this supported constraints object, uh, which we're setting with navigator.mediadevices.getSupportedConstraints, assuming that we support the media devices API, that is. This will tell us which constraints the browser supports. So these are the ones that the browser knows about. It's things like white balance, and exposure, brightness, zoom, um, focus distance, things like that. Uh, these are the things that we can set to change how the camera is physically operating, uh, you know, what kind of uh, image that we're getting uh, back from the camera. And this is uh, real time. This is affecting the video feed that is coming from the camera. So now we know which constraints the browser supports. We also need to take into account which constraints the track that we currently have supports, because it might be different. For example, on my phone, the, the uh, selfie camera doesn't have a flash. Um, it doesn't support zoom uh, or anything like that, whereas the environment camera does have a flash. So we can, uh, on that one, we'll have a different set of constraints, uh, sorry, a different set of capabilities that we can apply constraints to. So if we want to get the uh, available capabilities for the track, that's another API call. If we are currently dealing with the track, because we might not actually have started our stream, and if that track supports the get capabilities method, uh, because this is a relatively new method, so this is a feature detection. If it supports both of those things, then we call that function, and it gives us the list of capabilities for the track. This is the same kind of object as the supported capabilities uh, for the browser, only now we know uh, that, it's, that specifically this track also supports them. So when we want to uh, change a constraint on this video feed, we need to check that it is a supported constraint. So we check in our supported constraints that it exists and that it is true. We then get the capabilities for the current track. And if that's also true, then we'll uh, make a note of that. We'll set in our track constraints object uh, that's recording what constraints we want, that this particular value uh, is uh, set to this name. And then we'll apply all the constraints that we've got. The, the constraints object is just uh, a little bit weird. Um, instead of being um, an object with keys, it's an object with a, a single key, which is called advanced. And that's an array. And inside that, you put in more objects. So because you can't uh, directly map things, because you could have multiple entries for the same, uh, the same constraint, um, I would just have to, I'm just building this array here. And then we actually apply those constraints to the track. With newer browsers, we can actually use a, an API called the Image Capture API. Um, and this lets us um, direct the control actually taking a photo. Um, but we still need to support older browsers uh, that don't support this. So there is a fallback way, which involves using a canvas. So if we support image capture, we do one thing. But let's just quickly have a look at the, the fallback case. So we create a canvas, and um, we set its width to the same as the video that we're getting. And then we draw the video into the canvas. So that will just draw the current frame into the canvas. And then we can use the helper that I talked about last time to turn that canvas into a blob, which we can then store or manipulate or whatever else we want to do. One of the problems with this is that Get User Media itself for the video streams only supports up to uh, HD resolution. And obviously, if you have a modern mobile phone, your phone is probably much better than 4K resolution when it actually takes photos. So this is why we want to use the Image Capture API. 
So if the image capture API is supported, then we take that stream and we're going to get hold of its track and we're going to create this image capture object for that track. And then the, the simple thing that we can do is we can say the capture photo that will return us a photo from the uh, from the camera. And this, because we're specifically telling it to take a photo, we use the full resolution of the camera to get us that photo. So this is already a huge improvement. However, if we have um, uh, a modern browser that allows us to get the capabilities of the camera, we can also set some additional features. So here, you see I'm checking this photo capabilities object. And I skipped over it uh, initially, but in the start stream, if image capture is supported, I set the photo capabilities object to be the return result of get photo capabilities on uh, an image capture API for the track. Now, these photo capabilities, it's a much smaller list of things. It's just um, something called fill light mode, it's red eye reduction, and then image height and image width. In my app, I don't actually want to change the image height and image width. I want the full resolution. Uh, but the other two are pretty interesting. So if this track supports fill light mode, that's firing the flash. So the options for fill light mode when we actually take a photo, assuming it's supported, will be either auto, off, or on. So on meaning always fire the flash, auto meaning do it depending on the light levels, whatever the camera would normally do. Similarly for red eye reduction, so the way we do that is that in take photo, if we have this photo capabilities object and uh, the fill light mode includes whatever we're trying to set the flash to, then set the settings fill light mode to be that. And similarly, if the uh, photo capabilities red eye reduction is controllable, then we'll allow whatever our red eye reduction setting is to be set there. And red eye reduction and flash are just public properties on the camera helper so that they can be set from the UX layer whenever. So then we can pass that settings object to take photo, and it will fire the flash if we arrest it to, use the red eye reduction. Um, it will do whatever we want. So that's settings, capabilities, and constraints for streams, tracks, and uh, the taking a photo. Um, hopefully that's all clear now. Um, yeah, there we go. Proper access to all of the features of the camera. Um, thanks very much for watching. And until next time, happy coding. Thanks for watching. If you'd like to see more of our videos, click here and see you again. Cheers.